The possibility of nationwide anti-police rhetoric playing a role in the callous murder of Harris County Deputy Darren Goforth was addressed by county leaders yesterday. Several hours before the arrest was made of a suspect, Sheriff Ron Hickman and District Attorney Devin Anderson passionately sent this message. It is time for the silent majority in this country to support law enforcement. There are a few bad apples in every profession. That does not mean that there should be open warfare declared on law enforcement. So at any point when the rhetoric ramps up to the point where calculated, cold-blooded assassination of police officers happen, this rhetoric has gotten out of control. We've heard black lives matter, all lives matter. Well, cops' lives matter too. So why don't we just drop the qualifier and just say lives matter? Strong words. Are police being targeted just because of their job? That's our topic this half hour. And we want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also weigh in on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our roundup panel led by our Fox 26 senior legal analyst Chris Tritico, our news analyst Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst Jackie Valley. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. What do you all think about the comments made yesterday by our sheriff and DA? I, I couldn't agree more, and I think Devin Anderson really, really really put it well that uh, while there may be a few bad apples, that does not mean that anyone has the right to attack someone like Deputy Goforth. Uh, you know, my, I live out there. My wife and I actually were driving home from uh, dinner and I drove right past this scene about two minutes after it happened. There was only two police officers who had responded by that time. I didn't know what I was driving past when I saw it. This is a horrific act and you, we see this happening over and over and over again because of a few police officers in the nation uh, who have been tied to, to violations of civil rights. It's wrong, it's not right, and I agree with uh, the sheriff, Hickman, uh, Mustafa, lives matter. It, it's not black lives, it's not police lives, it's not, uh, it's not anybody's, it's lives matter. Yeah, my, my father uh, worked for the New York City Police Department for 18 years, retired from NYPD as a civilian. Uh, so we grew up in a household that anytime we saw violence against police officers, you know, we, you know, just mourn with the family, but with an understanding that, um, you know, we have this kind of uh, compact in our society that we all follow the law. And when the law enforcement's being targeted, then all of a sudden the, the order that exists amongst us, the compact that exists with, uh, amongst us doesn't work. And so this is incredibly troubling to see this happen so quickly, three across the, the, the Gulf Coast. And um, you know, I think we all need to come together and start moving beyond this as soon as we can. Jackie? I said when we discussed Ferguson a while back, whenever uh, the law, top law enforcement officer at the time, Eric Holder, went into that community and said, hey, as a black man, I don't trust cops either. And he was the top law enforcement officer in the country at that time. I said that was irresponsible in his statements. That was an irresponsible statement. And that has, was the beginning of a lot of movement that we've seen. There's been a mention of Black Lives Matter. And that movement was about it's us versus them. Unfortunately, I've, I've often said having a warfare, open warfare on law enforcement officers is not the way to go to try to ease racial tension and race relations. As a mother raising two young black men, I've always told them treat law enforcement officers like you do your teachers, like you do your ministers, treat them with respect. Like our sheriff and uh, our DA said, there are bad apples everywhere, but to say it's us versus them, like Eric Holder did, and like a lot of messages that we've seen coming from a now, lot of the people who are, are inciting a lot of, or, or baiting a lot of us versus them, that is not the way to handle race relations. But you agree with me that Black Lives Matter did not start out as an us versus them. It just started out as promoting that black lives truly do matter, didn't it? Black li well, as a black woman, I definitely think black lives matter, but the movement ever since Ferguson the movement ever since Ferguson and uh, black cops and white cops agree with this. It has turned into something else. It's it has turned into That's my point. you versus us, them versus us. And I do believe the <clears throat> statements, and I said this when this happened, and I'll say it to the, I'll say it now. When Eric Holder went in that community right. and said, hey, as a black man, I don't trust cops either. That was the wrong message to say. 
I want you to respond to that in just a second. I got to go to social media. Uh, Sally's monitoring it right now. Okay, taking a look at Twitter, Tex Barb says this is tragic. Police being executed on the streets. Can't imagine anyone wanting to be a police officer right now in this country. And this person says thoughts and prayers go out to the family of deputy. Go forth, may God shine perpetual light upon him. Should President Obama come out and speak about this death as he has in the killings of unarmed citizens? I think he absolutely should. You know, one of the one of the knocks the president has received is he is he picks and chooses the tragedies he's going to talk about and this is a tragedy and I think he should come out and I think he should say something about it. I want you to respond to this Eric Holder thing. Did Eric Holder start this? Look, I, I think that the reason why we have a hard time coming together on especially things like this, which there's no reason for us not to, is that we politicize these conversations. You know, when a, when a deputy, when a law enforcement officer is brutally assassinated, you know, killed like this, if you take the politics out of it, it makes it easier for the community to come together and work things out. When you keep injecting political rhetoric, you know, and important things in our life, um, important things that face our communities, important issues that we all have to come together and solve, we don't really move the ball forward. And I think that that's, that, that's my challenge okay. that, that I see going forward. So moving forward, how do we change the culture uh, this thought that it's 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 blacks versus cops, blacks versus whites, whatever. However, you look at it, how do we start changing that culture? Well, I, I think I think part of that is 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 sitting down with each other and dealing with the issues that impact both sides, uh, building trust among the communities, um, and <coughs> and pointing fingers at a time like this doesn't help at all. These incidents became politicized when our president decided to come out and speak about certain incidents. He, like you said, he picks and chooses which ones to well, talk about. Well, I said about. that's been the knock. I didn't and say. And so the fact that uh, officers are now being killed and he's been silent, but he's been in the past very vocal when others have been killed, that is making it politicized. When your top law enforcement officer goes into a community and makes irresponsible statements, that makes it politicized. There's nothing we can do about it. Those statements have been made by these men. So as we're moving forward for us to say we can't bring politics into it, those men are the ones who brought politics into it. Again, having a war, open warfare on law enforcement officers is not the way to try to ease racial you tension. You don't think that Eric Holder intended that result when he made that statement, do you? You truly don't. What I, what, I, what, I, what I said before and what I'm saying now, as the top law enforcement officer, his statements were irresponsible. They should not have been made. He should have went into the community and tried to have peace, but to make it into a racial thing and say, as a black man, I too don't trust cops, that was the beginning of a lot of other actions. Look, I, I mean, the, it, it's hard to talk about Ferguson when you talk about this particular tragedy, right? Wow. Because in Ferguson, <laughs> in Ferguson, uh, th the, everybody agrees, this is a national press, that there was a system in which, you know, African Americans were specifically targeted, that the county and the city, the, the city made its money by citing them and creating fines uh, and jailing people, and the and the numbers are astronomical, and that's a that's a factual thing that people were talking about, and law enforcement across the country has looked at the actions of of the city of Ferguson and has said that that is an inappropriate way to do stuff. Those are and bad apples that Devin was talking exactly. about. That's exactly. Those are bad apples bad that we're talking apples. about. So let's let's move on. And again, your role as the top law enforcement officer of the country is not to go in there and to incite and to make it worse, but to try to have peace and to make it better. So the fact that yes, there may be some incidents there, no one's denying that. Well, let's go in that's there. That's what he went on to let's say. Go, by saying, as a black man, I don't trust cops, that's how you fix things? Was there a follow-up no. Was there a follow up to what he said? Well, the federal judge stepped into that, that scenario. No, did, did, did Eric Holder follow that statement up with a Absolutely, whatever? number of times, number <laughs> of times. But look, I don't think that that's important at this point. At this point, as, as within Harris County, within our community, a deputy has been killed cold-bloodedly. And if we take the, the political rhetoric out of it, it can allow us to come together and move forward in a way where we can prevent these things from happening well, in Well, this administration put the politics into it. You can't say, oh, we can, well, let's undo the past. 
you can't undo the past. The fact that he's very silent on these debts, Speaking that makes it continue to be political. And so the fact that you're saying, oh, we have to take the politics out of it, but these administrators are the ones who put the politics into it in the first place, it's not going to happen. That's not realistic. Final thought. Well, well at, at, at the end of the day, this is too important to keep trying to make political points. We have to come together because all lives do matter. We're gonna leave it right there. And let me just say from all of us here on the panel while we have heated discussions that our hearts uh, and our thoughts and our prayers go out to Deputy mm -hmm. Goforce family. And, and we do agree, all of us, that lives matter. And this is such a horrible, horrible tragedy.